Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be installing and beginning the process of configuring the blog plugin for ViewPress. So to do that, we're going to come over here to the blog plugin post and let me just zoom in. All right, so this is what we're going to be doing. So it's now time to install and begin the process of configuring the blog plugin for ViewPress. So we're going to start by describing the main features provided by the plugin. Then we'll go over the installation and usage. And then after going over the installation and usage, We'll describe the concepts and implementation of document classification, permalinks, and directory classification. So if you're interested, you can check out the blog plugin code right here. So you can come over here to this link to look at all of the code for the blog plugin if you're interested. And you can also check out the blog theme made by ViewPress if you're interested in learning more about it. So you can come over here to look at this blog theme provided by ViewPress if you want to use that. Now we won't be discussing the blog theme in detail since we're using the default theme. All right, so you wanna make sure that you start your local development server, which should be running at localhost port 8080 to see the changes we'll be making to the site. And if the changes aren't appearing after you save them, then you wanna try restarting your local development server. All right, so you can view all the code in this tutorial by going to the tutorial 15 branch of the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. So you can come over here and you can check out this branch to get all of the code that we'll be using in this tutorial. And over here is where I have the local development server running. So you can see it's running on port 8080. And then I have it running down here in this terminal. All right, so let's get into the features. So the blog plugin provides the following main features. So it provides classification, which means you can quickly classify posts by using their characteristics. And pagination, which allows you to break up the display of your posts into multiple pages. And this provides easier navigation and a better user experience. And then we also have the client API, which allows you to access global variables that contain data about pagination, front matter, and the various services the plugin provides. And we'll be discussing pagination and the client API in more detail in future tutorials. So if you were to come over here, you could see that we have an all post section right here. And then you could, if we came down here, you could see how we can paginate through all the posts right here. So this is what we mean when we talk about pagination. And then you can also see over here that we have these different by topic sections. So this would give you all of the blog posts for leak code. And then you can see how we can just paginate through them. And then we also have it for ViewPress right here. So you can see how we can paginate through them. So that's what we mean when we talk about the classification so that we can quickly classify the post by using their characteristics, which in this case is the topic. All right, and then you saw how we can paginate through, and then to display certain things on those paginated pages, we're accessing global variables provided by this client API. All right, so now let's get into the installation. So we're now ready to discuss the installation of the plugin. All right, so if you're using the tutorials repo, so if you're following along with the tutorials, then you want to switch to the tutorial 15 branch and you can run the following command to install the package instead of running the installation command. So if we come over here. If you had the tutorial 15 branch already checked out, then what you could do is you could just come down here and you could just type in yarn to install it, or if you were using NPM, you could use NPM install. And this will ensure that you have the same version used in the blog since the command uses the version specified in the yarn.lock file during the installation. All right, and if you wanted to use the installation command, then to install the plugin in your own project, you can run the following command. So you probably saw that I already ran this command, but if you wanted to run it, then you could just paste this in and then you could just run this command if you were using yarn and then you also have the option of running this command right down here if you're using npm all right so let me just clear this and down here you can also see that if you want to make sure that you're using the exact same plugin blog plugin version that the blog is using and that the tutorials is using then you're gonna to want to run yarn upgrade and then this right here where you're just specifying the exact version of 1.9.4. All right, so after installing it, this is what the package.json file should look like. So it's gonna look something like this. So this is the package.json file for the tutorials right here. 
So you can see down here is where we have that the blog plugin installed right there. And if we come over here to the package.json file, you can see it's right there. All right, so your package.json file should look something similar to this or exactly like this if you're filing exactly along with the tutorials. All right, so now when you install the blog plugin, you may have noticed the following plugins also get installed. So we have this vshu plugin, this discuse plugin is how I'm going to say that, feed, MailChimp, sitemap. So all of these different plugins also get installed. So these plugins provide features that are common to blogs. So they're included in the installation of the blog plugin. Including these plugins in the installation of the blog plugin saves you the time of searching for plugins that provide these common features as well as from having to separately install each plugin. So the Vishu and Discus plugin, they provide comments. Then you also have a feed plugin, a MailChimp plugin. So, you know, if you wanted to send out emails to your users and this feed plugins for RSS feeds, and then we also have a sitemap down here. So all of these plugins right here automatically get installed when you install the blog plugin. Now, these plugins will only be used, though, if you enable them in the config.js file. So they get installed, but they won't be used unless you enable them. And they can also be installed as standalone plugins, so you don't need to use the blog plugin to use them for your site. All right, so you can install every single one of these plugins separately from the blog plugin. And we'll be discussing these plugins in more detail in future tutorials. All right. So now let's move on to the usage. So to use the blog plugin, we need to add the filing to the config.js file, which should now look something like this. So if we come down here to the bottom of the config.js file, we can see this code right down there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to open up the config.js file. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this part right here. and then I'll paste this in. All right, and then we'll save the file. All right, so now we have, now we're using the blog plugin, All right? So all we have to do is come down here to the plugins right here, and then we just put in at viewpress slash blog, and that will allow us to use the blog plugin in our blog. All right, so now let's move on to document classification. So the blog plugin provides a document classifier, which is a set of functions that handles the classifications of pages with the same characteristics. So these characteristics for pages in a blog may consist of pages in the same directory. So for example, a post directory. So all of the posts in the blog are actually inside of this underscore post directory right there. And that uses that post directory to be able to classify them and pages containing the same front matter key. So for example, you could have a tag with JS, which signifies those pages contain content related to JS, which by JS, we mean JavaScript. And another common requirement is the ability to group all pages as well as pages with specific tags for pagination. So like you saw when I was going through all these posts over here, we had pagination for all of the pages, and then we had pagination through pages that shared a, a topic tag. So whether it be leak code, Node.js, or ViewPress in this case. All right, and then you can also use tag instead of topic as well, if you wanted to do that. All right, so before discussing directory classification, we're going to first define what a permalink is, as well as discuss how they're built and configured. And this will give us a better understanding of how the blog plugin uses permalinks to build customizable links for blog posts which is preferable to using the default way of creating links. All right, so we're gonna talk about permalinks now. All right, so a permalink is a URL that is intended to remain unchanged for a long time. And this leads to links that are less susceptible to link rot, which is when a link ceases to point to its originally targeted web page due to the page being relocated to a new address or becoming permanently unavailable. All right, so link rot is something that you want to avoid and ViewPress v1 provided support for creating customizable links by introducing the ability to build permalinks all right so to build a permalink you can do this by using the following template variables right here so these are the different variables and then these are the descriptions of the variables so we have this year variable right here and this is the published year of the post which is four digit 
four digits, so it could be 2022, for example. You have month, so publish month of the post, so it could be two digit. So if you're thinking the first month of the year would be represented by zero one. And then you have this I month. So this is the published month of posts without the leading zero. So for January it would just be one. You wouldn't have to include that zero. And then day, published day of the post. So it'd be two digits. So, you know, today's the 23rd. So you could just do 23 for this. And then I day, published day of post without leading zero. So again, if you were publishing a post on September 9th, you could just, instead of doing zero nine, you would just do nine. Then you have the slug, which is the slugified file path without the extension. And then you have this regular variable right here. And this is the permalink generated by ViewPress by default. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the default configuration. So we're going to take a, a closer look at that regular template variable. All right, so the default configuration for permalinks is this regular template variable right here. So the regular template variable will first check if the markdown files in the documents directory, which in our case is the docs directory, are index files. So i.e. readme.md or index.md. So it's going to look inside of the docs directory. So if you come over here and if we open up and let me just close out of this terminal down there, give us a little more room. And if you come in here and if we go inside of the docs directory, so what it's doing here is it's looking inside of this docs directory right here and it's looking for any readme.md files inside of it. All right. So it could be a readme.md file or an index.md file. All right. So if they're index files, they get converted to your URLs without extensions that are based on the file hierarchy. All right. And if they're not index files, they get converted to URLs with HTML extensions that are based on the file hierarchy. All right, so let's look at some examples to make this clear where the file paths are relative to the documents directory, which again, in our case, is the docs directory. So this is the relative path. So you can see here that if we're inside of the docs directory, this is the relative path to it. So we have that readme.md file right there. And then this will result in just the forward slash there for the page routing. And then if you created a foo directory, and then if you added a readme.md file inside of it, then the page routing you're going to get is this slash foo right there. And then if you just created a foo.md page, you would just get this slash foo.html because this isn't an index file because it's not, it doesn't have the name of readme.md or index.md. So it's going to get that extension right there of .html. And then if you created a foo directory inside of your docs directory right here, and then if you created a file called bar.md that's going to give you a page route of this slash foo slash bar.html because again this isn't a index file this bar.md file it is since it's not an index file it's going to get that html extension and then you can see how all of these files are based on the file hierarchy so inside of just inside of that docs directory, it's just going to give you that slash. If you're inside of a foo directory, you're going to get that slash foo. So you can see how these directories, how they relate to the page routing of uh, for the different URLs here. All right. So you also have so instead of doing the .md, so you can also use view files. So files with a view extension follow the same conventions described for for markdown files above, for example. If you had a readme.view, that gets converted to just a slash there. All right, so you can also take a look. Let me just make this a little bit bigger over here. So you can also take a look at file to path.ts to see the code that handles converting these files to path. So this is the code that actually does that conversion for us, that converts those files to those paths, to those different page URLs up here. All right, so that is the default configuration. And what that does for us. And now we're going to talk about the global configuration. So to globally change the default configuration for permalinks for your site, you can add the permalink property to the config.js file. So we can build a permalink to use in the config.js file by using the template variables. So for example, we can use the template variables to build the following permalink. So we can use that year, month, day, and the slug. And we can then set this as the value for the permalink property in the config.js file. So if we wanted to, what we could do is we could come over here inside of our config.js file and I could just copy this right here. And if I come up here 
what I could do is I could just paste this in. And then what we could do is we could then save this file. And then instead of using that regular template variable, so globally on the site, it's going to use this permalink right here that we built from all of these other template variables. All right, so now we're gonna be using the default configuration. So we'll be leaving the permalink property with the default value of regular, and we'll use the configuration provided by the blog plugin to customize the permalinks for each blog post. All right, so I'm just going to remove that line right there, and then we'll just save the file. All right, so now we'll talk about local configuration. So let me just come back up here to local configuration. All right, so it's also possible to set a permalink locally for a single page, which overrides any globally set configuration. So this is done by setting the permalink property in the front matter of the markdown file. So you can see right here that we just have a local permalink right here. So this is just a markdown file with a title of local permalink. And then here we're setting the permalink property and we're just saying, we're giving it a value of using a local permalink. So this will set the permalink property to be using a local permalink instead of following the global configuration. So whatever the global configuration is, if it was, for example, using that year, uh, the year template variable that we did up here with the month, the day, and the slug, it would ignore that and it would just follow this permalink value that we set right here. All right, so, and then you can just set this in any markdown file that you have. You can just add it to the front matter of the markdown file. All right, so now that we have an understanding of document classification and permalinks, let's move on to the directory classifier, which handles classifying pages placed in the same directory. All right, so here is the directory classification. So first we need to create a directory that will contain all of the pages we want to classify. And to do this, we'll create that underscore post directory inside of the docs directory. And the docs directory for your site should now look something like this. So if we come over here, and I'm just gonna open up this terminal, and you can see that we're already inside of the docs directory. So inside of there, what we're gonna do is we're going to create that underscore post directory. And if we list out, you can see now we have that underscore post directory right there. And let me just list out all the hidden files as well. So you can see how it matches over here. So we have that .viewpress directory, our underscore post directory, our icons directory, and then our readme.md file, which is the home page of the blog. All right, so next we'll create the following example pages in the post directory. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go into the underscore post directory, and then let me just clear this. And then inside of here, we're going to create the following um, file. So we're going to create this file right here, and we're gonna say example page, and then dash one dot MD. So we have 2020.0703, dash and I forgot the example part so example page and let me just double check that 2020 zero three or zero seven zero three example page one yep okay and then what we'll do is we will just change this to be 2021 and we'll change this to be 11 and then we'll change this to be 16 and then we have example page 2.md and then what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll just make this post for the year 2022 with 05 for the month and then the day of 08 and then we have example page three all right so let's just clear that and if we list out the contents you can see we have all of these example pages right here and the post directory for your site should now look something like this so you can see if it's looking like this for all of our example pages then you should be good to go. Now by default, ViewPress will create the following page URL since it uses the regular template variable described above when building the links. So it's going to look inside of, remember it's going to base these page URLs off of the file hierarchy. So that's why it's gonna use, so it's gonna look inside of the docs directory and then it's gonna see that underscore post directory. So it's gonna use that to build the URL. And then inside of there, it's going to see these three files and then it's just going to take that file name right there, and then it's just gonna tack on that .html extension to each one. All right, so what we're gonna do now is let me just clear this, close that out, and then what we may have to do is, what we're gonna to try to do is just go right to these links right here, because you should now be able to navigate to these links. 
now yep so we're gonna have to restart the local development server assuming that we did everything correctly so let's just restart that and after doing that we should be able to navigate yep okay so yep you can see here that now we can navigate to those links and you can see that it's just an empty page right now there's nothing going on there but that is the first link right there for that 2020 block but example page one that 2020 blog post and then example page two is right here and then we have example page three all right now the default behavior is fine for creating the main pages on the site but having the ability to build customizable links for blog posts is preferable all right so after using the configuration provided by the blog plugin to build customized permalinks the page urls will look like this so you can see how it's getting rid of that underscore post directory and it's just adding slashes instead of the dashes there that were just automatically in the name. It was automatically in the file name. It was already in the file name there. So it's just adding slashes there instead. And it's removing that .html extension. So to build these customizable links, we're going to start setting up the directory classifier configuration in the config.js file. All right. So the first thing we're going to do for that is we're going to look at the directory's property. So First, we'll add the directories property, which is used to create the directory classifier. And the expected type is this directory classifier right here. And the default value is an empty array. And then here's the updated config.js file. So your config.js file should look something similar to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this right here. And then I'm going to come over to the config.js file. I'm just going to close that terminal. And what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to remove this and then we're going to paste that in and then let me just format this a little bit. All right, so let me see if we can just format the file. Yep. All right, so you can see right here that we just have, we are using the plugin right here of the ViewPress blog plugin right here. So we're using the plugin and then inside of there, we have this directories property that we're setting and we're first, we're just going to give it a value of an empty array. And then inside of here, we're going to be adding properties for the directory classifier. All right. So let's just make sure that it's matching that and yep. So that looks good. And all right. Now we've sit and let's just save this file. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the ID property. So next we'll add the ID property, which sets a unique ID for the current classifier. So we'll use a value of posts for that. And the expected type is a string and the default, and let me just zoom in, move up over there and the expected type is a string and the default value is undefined. All right, so here's the updated config.js file for that. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to go inside of this directories right here. And we're gonna open up an object and then inside of there is our ID property. And then we are just going to give that a value of posts, format the file, and then we'll save it. All right, so this gives us that ID property. And then we'll get into this dir name property. So now we'll add the dir name property, which is used to identify the directory we want to classify. So this is, in our case, that underscore post directory we created earlier. So the expected type is a string, and the default value is undefined for this dir name property. And then this will be the updated config.js file. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come over here, and we're going to add that property and then we'll give it that underscore post value and let me format the file and we'll save it all right so after setting the dir name property the page urls get set to the customized permalinks mentioned above now we may have to restart the local development server first but let's try visiting this page yep all right so you can see here that now we're able to visit this page right here by using the customized permalink. So you can see that we no longer need that underscore post and those dashes are now slashes and we no longer have that .html extension. So we're now using the customized permalinks 
for all of our example pages right here. Okay. Now, the customized permalinks are actually built using properties we haven't discussed yet. So the blog plugin, what it does is it sets the it sets default values that we don't need to explicitly set in the config.js file. And we'll be discussing these other properties and their default values below. Now, the previously provided links still work because they get converted to the customized permalinks when navigating to those pages. So if we come back up to directories, I think it was, yep, right up here. So you can see that these pages, when you click on these links right here, they actually still work and they're just getting converted to use the customized permalinks, all right? So, and also when you go to the link right here, if you inspect the browser page, and if you go to the console, you'll see that we're getting this error right here. All right, so what this is saying is you're getting this unknown custom element. So when navigating to the links, if you inspect the browser, then go to that console tab, you'll see the following error, unknown custom element with post. So you can see that right over here, you have unknown custom element post, and it's asking if you registered the component correctly. All right, so this error is occurring because the plugin is looking for a post layout component in the layouts directory, which we haven't created yet. All right, so before creating that post layout to fix that error, we're going to first add the path property. All right, so the path property specifies the entry page, also known as the list page for the current classifier. So this page will be used to display your post as a paginated list. All right, so the expected type is a string and the default value is this ID right here, where ID is the value of the ID property we previously set. So this means you don't need to explicitly set the path property if you're going to be using the same value as the ID property. And we'll be using a value of post for the path property. So we don't need to explicitly set the property. However, we're going to explicitly set the property because it allows us to have a quick reference to the property and its value. All right, so here's the updated config.js file. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to add the post to it right there. So if we come over here, we're just going to say path and then we're just going to add this post to it right there and then we'll format the file and then we'll save it so now what you can do is you can navigate to the entry page by using this link right here so let me just close this link up there all right so now we can navigate to this post page right there and you could have done this before because remember it was just using the ID value that we set up here. And then it was just setting that value by default for us for the path. And now we're just explicitly setting it. All right. So notice this link has the value of the path property in it. So that's that post right there. And this is the same link we set in the nav bar drop down menu for all posts. So you can now click on that link to navigate to the entry page, which will eventually be a paginated list of all the posts. So when you click here, you come over so this is already the post page. So if we go to the home page, what you can do is you can go down here to all posts and this will take you to that post page right there. All right. So currently when navigating to that link, the layout component, the layout component provided by the default theme is displayed. So the blog plugin will fall back to using the layout component if it's unable to find an index post layout component in the layouts directory. So this means we can create an index post layout component that specifically handles the layout of the paginated list of all the posts instead of using the layout component. All right, so when we go to this post right here, it's just using the layout component provided by the default theme. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to create an index post layout. All right, so this is creating the index post layout. So to create the index post layout component, we're going to add an index post.view file inside of the layouts directory and so we'll come over here, we open up the terminal, and what we're gonna do is we are going to go to the layouts directory. So our layouts directory, we wanna come out of the post directory. And then what we're gonna do is list out here, we're gonna go into our .viewpress directory. And then if we list out inside of there, you can see that we have config.js file, the public and the theme. So we're gonna go into the theme directory. And if we list out the contents in there, you can see we have our layouts directory. So we're going to go into the layouts directory and then inside of here is where we are going to be making that index post.view file. 
and let me just clear that. And if we list out here, you can see that this is our directory structure. We have that global layout.view file that we created in a previous tutorial, and we have our index post.view file. So we're going to begin the development of the index post layout component by adding this right here to it. So these template script and style tags. So let me just clear this, close this terminal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the index post.view file right here. And I'm just going to, and that's fine. And I'm just going to copy this. And what we'll do is we'll just paste this in and we will save the file. All right, so we're gonna continue developing the index post layout component in a future tutorial, but right now we're just adding the template script and style tags to it. All right, so now if we come over here, let's go back up to creating the index post layout. So now if we navigate to this file it should be using that index post layout so let's just make sure if we come over here and if we restart the local development server and if we go here so you can see yep so now it's using that index post layout instead of the layout component provided by the default theme so you can see that it's it looks a little bit different because um, it doesn't have the nav bar in it um, that the layout component provided by the view the the default theme does all right so we created the index post layout and now we're going to talk about the layout property so we're now ready to add the layout property which is used to specify which layout to use for the entry page all right so the expected type is a string and the default value is index post or it would be layout all right, so from the default value, we can see why the entry page originally defaulted to using the layout component before we created the index post layout component. All right, so it originally will look for that index post right there, didn't find it, so it just used that layout value instead. And since the block plugin looks for the index post layout component by default, we don't need to explicitly set the property. However, we're going to explicitly set it because this gives us a quick reference to the property and its value. All right, so down here, quick note is that it's also possible to use a custom value for the layout property. So for example, you could use a value of my index post, which you would have to explicitly set in the config.js file. Then you would have to create a my index post.view file inside of the layouts directory, just like we did for the index post.view file. All right, so we're going to explicitly set the layout for with a value of index post. So if we come down here, you can see there is the value for the index post. So what we're going to do is we're going to, let's just close out that terminal and we're going to open up the config.js file. And if we come down here, what we're going to do is we are going to add the layout and we're going to give it a value of index post. All right. And then we'll save the file. All right. So now we've specified the layout property. All right, so now we're going to fix that unknown custom element error. So let me just make this a little bit bigger. So let's go back down here. All right, so now we're ready to fix the unknown custom element error we got after adding the dir name property. So to fix this error, we need to create the previously mentioned post layout component. All right, so now let's look at how to create the post layout component. So the post layout component is used to handle the layout for individual post pages. All right, so we have our paginated list of pages, and then when you click on an individual post, that's what this layout is gonna be used for. All right, so to create the post layout component, we're going to add a post.view file inside of the layouts directory. All right, so if we come over here, and if we open up the terminal, then inside of our layouts directory, what we want to do here is we want to create that post.view file. And if we list out the contents, now you can see we have that post.view file. All right, so the layouts directory for your site should now look something like this with the global layout, the index post, and the post layouts. All right, so we're going to begin the development of the post layout component by adding the template script and style tags, just like we did for the index post. So if we come over here, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the post.view file and then we're just going to copy this in 
and we'll just paste that and then we will save Make sure we format it and then we will save file all right so we're going to continue developing the post layout component in a future tutorial all right so now what we're going to do is we are going to look at this item layout property right here all right so if we come down here to the item layout all right so we're now ready to add the item layout property which is used to specify which layout to use for the individual post pages so when you look at a specific post this is the layout that's going to get used and the expected type is a string and the default value is post so from the default value we can see why the blog plugin looks for a post layout component and since the blog plugin looks for the post layout component by default we don't need to expli explicitly set the property however we're going to explicitly set it because this once again gives us that quick reference to the property and its value inside of our config.js file now it's also possible to use a custom value for the item layout property so for example you could you could use a value of my post which you would have to explicitly set in the config.js file then you would have to create a mypost.view file inside of the layouts directory, just like we did for the post.view file that we just created. All right, so if you come down here, you can see we have the item layout right down there in our config.js file. So what we're gonna do is we are going to open up our config.js file, and then inside of there, we're going to add our item layout so this will give a value of post and then we'll format the file and we'll save it. All right, so now we've added the item layout property right here to use the value of post and we created that post.view file. So if we were to come over here, so let's go back up here to, I believe it was up here. Yep. So now if we come over here, if we navigate to these individual post pages right here, and if we inspect, assuming we don't have to restart the local development server. Yep, so you can see that we have errors over here, but it's no longer, there are no longer errors for, um, for not having that, that post.view file. Um, so that's looking good. So you can see now that by creating that post.view file, we no longer have those errors. And that's the case for all of our different pages in here. So if we go to the console again, no longer have that unknown custom element error for the post. All right. So now that we've done that, let's go back down to the item permalink. All right, so we're now ready to add the item permalink property, which is used to build the customized permalinks for each blog post. Now, the expected type is a string, and the default value is this right here, which has the year, the month, the day, and then the slug value. So from the default value, we can see how the blog plugin built the customized permalinks after only setting the dir name property. Since the blog plugin uses the value we currently want, to build our item permalinks, we don't need to explicitly set the property. However, just like the other properties, we're going to explicitly set it because this once again gives us that quick reference to the property and its value. All right, so this is the updated config.js file. So if you come down here, you can see we have the item permalink value right there, and I'm just gonna copy this value. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to come down here and we're just going to paste that in and we'll format the file and we'll save it. All right, so now we have, we've explicitly set that item permalink value. So, and again, you can customize this to be, to be, to be built using any, to use any of those template variables that we discussed previously when we looked at the permalinks. So if you were to come up here to the template variables, you can build your customized permalinks by using these template variables right over here. You can build those customized permalinks for your blog posts by using any combination of these values right here. All right. Um, now let's look at a quick summary of the URLs 
and the layout. So here's a table that summarizes the relationship between the page URLs, the blog plugin builds using customized permalinks and the layout components. So you can see here that we have that post URL. And what this does is it uses that index post layout and it falls back to using that layout. So this post right here, if you remember, up here from the path. So this is where we set the path value right here. That's what's using that post and that's this link right here. And now it's using that index post layout instead of the layout since we created that index post dot view file inside of the layouts directory. So it's now using that. And so that's the layout that it's going to use and that's the URL that you're going to get. And then now you can see we have these URLs. So when we created these files up here, I believe it was set up here in the, yep. So right up here, when we created these files right up here, these um, example pages, these markdown files. So after creating that, we got these links right here. And then after we specified the dir name property, then we were able to get able to get these links right here. All right, so it was already using those permalink values, so or the the default value to create those permalinks. So that's how we were already able to create these permalinks right here, and we didn't need to explicitly set the permalink values or the permalink property there. So that's how you're able to get these URLs right here by setting those properties. And then it's going to use that post layout that we created instead of using, well, instead of just getting that error that we got, we created that post layout inside of our layouts directory to resolve that unknown, unknown custom element error that we were getting. All right. And then you can see that these layouts correspond to these URLs right over here. All right, so in this video, we went over a lot of stuff. So we looked at the different features that the blog plugin provides. We looked at the installation using the tutorials repo, using the installation command. We looked at the updated package.json file um, to add or to use the blog plugin. We looked at the automatically installed plugins that come when you install the blog plugin. And we looked at the usage right here, so how to add it. And then we took a look at the document classification, permalinks, we discussed template variables, default configuration, global configuration, local configuration. And then we looked at the directory classification right here. And we talked about all these different properties. So we looked at the directories property, the ID property, the dir name, the path. We created our index post layout. And then we created our, or we looked at the layout property. Then we created the post layout. And then we looked at the item layout property and then we looked at the item permalink property. And then down here we have the summary of the URLs and layouts. All right, so in the next tutorial, we'll be discussing the configuration for the pagination property, as well as how to access the pagination data in the layout components by using the client API. All right, so we'll see you in the next video.